Hello mate, welcome back to another exciting episode of Render Review. This week we've got some really solid entries from Sensi, Chris B, Mr Creepton and Michael Whaley. Before we get stuck in with this, just remember to get your submissions in and check thundorn.com for the guidelines. And also you can support the channel by visiting the Patreon in the description down below or become a channel member by hitting the join button next to the subscribe button. So let's jump right into this. So the first entry we have here is from Sensi. He's uh, fairly regular on this channel. <laughs> so what we've got here is, um, I think it was Cassie Goth, he names this character. So let's have a look at what we've got. We've got an interesting background with a, a good depth of field on the moon. It seems to be some kind of blood moon situation going on. And we've got a tree in the background. And then the character is actually sitting on what I assume is some kind of a tomb or something like that. Some kind of concrete wall, maybe. And the character seems to be some kind of... Maybe she's wearing fake wings. Maybe she's a demon of some sort. Hard to say without any context. So what I'm seeing is a good level of contrast here. As you can see, the shadows on the face are nice and dark. And the shadows around... We've got a very hard light source, which leads me to believe that the character is, uh, in in the context of the image, the character is sitting underneath a street light or something similar, because the shadow is very hard and the scene is very dark elsewhere. So good level of contrast. Pose looks good. The little bit of clipping with the character's elbow digging into the knee there. Um, other than that, I can't see too many problems again there's a little bit of um contact issue there on the chin it looks like her hands kind of hovering uh, below the chin rather than they're actually being contact but again fairly minor complaint all things considered the character's making good eye contact with the camera it's a little bit blurred this image i will say but that might just be the compression from the uh, character or from the image being emailed to me wings look good i'm quite impressed by that they look um they look pretty realistic generally yeah a pretty scary looking set of wings not something you'd expect to see on a young attractive woman the only part of this image that really leaps out of me as being out of place is this area here um and that is because Given the depth of the shadows and the contrast of the rest of the image, the shadow underneath the character on this wall seems to be too bright. It looks like she's been superimposed on the image afterwards. That may not be the case, but that's just how it looks from where I, uh, I'm looking at it from here. Um, realistically, with that much of a shadow on the rest of her body, you would expect to see this shadow underneath her bottom to be a lot darker overall though it's a really good image really solid like the mood um the overall feel of the image really good effort there my friend so well done next up we've got this submission from chris b um truth be told there's not a lot to see in this image you've got a police box i assume that's um a tardis reference there and two characters there is no background or floor um i don't know if that's intentional or if it's an oversight or not so we've got two characters i believe i've seen these poses these are like um pre-made poses that um you can buy from the studio store it's, it's a little hard to come up with much feedback in terms of context because um there's there's not a lot to draw from the image it's it's two characters in front of a um a phone box um the lighting seems to be quite nice there's a reasonable amount of contrast there's quite a lot of blue being reflected off the front of the police box onto this character's face either that or there's a blue light source being used off on this side of the image and then there seems to be a white light source on there quite hard shadow so i'm imagining that there's just spotlights that have been set up by the uh, by by chris there um, contact of the models is good on the hand here there's a little bit of clipping just there where the image the uh, models are different sizes so what essentially has happened here is he's used a pose that he's got from the store 
but um, because the models are different heights and different builds, there's clipping where these two hands meet and then there's no contact there where these two meet. So it's a good tip for everybody there is when you use pre-built, pre-bought poses, you do have to do some tweaking. Um, now I look at it, the forearms are also clipping together there. So just be mindful that even though the poses may look good in the, in the initial um, phase, when it comes to tweaking, you're gonna have to move some of these things around. So I personally would have adjusted that pose down, move this arm in a little bit so the, the clipping in the forearms and the hands doesn't happen. And the contact between these two hands um, does happen. Characters are both making good eye contact with the camera, so that's good. And overall, the image is not a bad image at all by any stretch of the imagination. Um, with an image of this nature, it's very difficult to get any context from it because there's no background or ground. And if this is the TARDIS flying through space, um, I would still focus on making that visible by adding some kind of stars or something in the background. So, um, you know, not a bad effort. Keep up the good work, my friend, and um, keep on improving. Next entry we have is from Mr. Creepdom. Uh, again, not a lot of context as to what this image is relating to, so we'll just comment on what we see. Obviously, we've got two busty ladies here, uh, both making visual contact with the camera. Um, models look good. Lighting looks good. It's not too hard in the shadows, as you can see, so there's a large light source above them, which is creating this nice soft highlight along the forearms and on the face, so on the forehead and under the eyes there. Um, again, we've got, I'm guessing that this is some kind of angel devil motif going on in that this young lady with the smutty look on her face is wearing red and this lady with the glasses I presume is a um, sweet innocent kind of character, hard to say. So the hair is a little bit standing away from the face just there in this area. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but what that tends to do is it screams to, to me, as, as an observer, it screams to me weak, which I know it's very difficult in Dash Studio to get away from that because they are essentially weak on bald characters. But um, I would focus on making the hair lay na more naturally against the head. On this character, because of the way her head's tilted, and the fact that she's got her hair tucked behind her head on this side, I presume it's the same hairstyle with different colors applied to it maybe, and there are different styling options. But the gap is a lot narrower on this side and it doesn't look quite so much like a wig. Whereas on this character, the hairline itself is fine up here. But yeah, just under the, uh, under the ear there, a bit of a gap. Um, okay, so there are some drawbacks to using extra large boobs on characters and that is the way that they hang. Um, it obviously, with, with the arms up in the air, um, the, uh, the natural breast tends to lift up with the arm, um, whereas on the Das Studio characters, they tend to remain where they are, making them look a little bit saggy. So it's something else to just bear in mind. But again, really strong, like the lighting a lot, background looks good, and the eye contact with the camera is really nice. So overall, that's a really solid effort there, Mr. Creepdom. So well done, my friend. Finally, we've got an, F, uh, an effort here by Michael Whaley. This is, I think, the third attempt. He sent me many copies because he kept noticing things that he'd done wrong um, and then resending me to Now, that's not a bad thing. That just shows that he's learning and that he's wanting to get the best quality image that he possibly can. So any clipping or bad poses or anything like that, he spots um, that, you know, he, he fixed them and then reset me the fixed image. So, you know, nothing to be ashamed of there. We've all been there. We've all rushed to get an image in, onto a game or to a, a magazine or whatever, and then noticed glaring mistakes that we've made. Um, overall, really good image. Like the contrast, as you can see, really nice dark shadows around the side of the face there. Really, really good contrast between light and dark. That's what I like to see, just like real life. Uh, I'm guessing this is a large but single light source off over this way um, because the shadows are fairly hard but there is a little bit of softness there which leads me to believe the light source is kind of reasonably sized. And the, the brightness of this urn on the side obviously leads me to believe it's not too far away either because this is quite bright compared to the other things around so I would say um, it's, it's 
reasonably large light source just off camera. So overall we've got a pirate thing going on here. She's got two muskets on a bandolier and then a big nice scimitar which um, she's holding in a very safe position there. <laughs> Quite a threatening looking image with an angry looking expression. I really like the the motif here is very solid, very strong pirate vibes going on there, which I'm a big fan of pirate things. Um, yeah, overall, really solid image. Something Definitely something to be proud of there in terms of the image quality. I'm not seeing any noise or grain, which means the image was left to cook for long enough that those things aren't an issue. And in terms of the quality of the props and all that something, I know that obviously most of these things are going to have been bought for, as a set but it's good to see that you haven't just plonked one or two things in front of a background. You've gone for a large number of uh, items in the background just to make the scene look a bit more full. Obviously having a black background um, is it's not necessarily a bad thing, but in terms of this kind of content, it would have been nice to have seen some kind of cabin on a pirate ship or perhaps a cave. This might be a treasure trove or something like that. Um, but either way, really strong image, definitely happy with the output of the, the content that we've seen. So awesome work. Thanks everyone for your submissions. Some really good entries again this week. Really pleased with the content and I think you guys should all be as well. Keep those submissions coming. Visit thundorn.com for guidelines on the kind of images that we're after and really just get them in <laughs> the more the merrier as far as i'm concerned i uh, hope you all enjoyed that and found it informative let me know what you think in the comments below and i will see you in the next episode but either way thanks very much guys take care of yourselves bye bye